thank um, Ron Norton for inviting me down here for um, working with us to present this today. Um, this is the second time we've been able to present this class. Um, uh, Linda Kennedy and I, she's an amazing mentor to me and a good, good friend. And um, these are fun for us to do. And uh, so here we are. Um, I give you my little spiel on the cover page anyway of my handout. We're going to first focus our attention up here um, to talk about just some factors in calculating dosages. I'm going to start by discussing um, things that are on the physical side of what can affect uh, your medicine getting absorbed into your body and in the right <coughs> amount. Um, and then we're going to move into just some math stuff and then we're going to do some fun cooking um, activities. So pretty easy transition all across and if I start talking too fast let me know. My name is Erica Haywood. Um, I'm the owner of Love Grown Caregiver Services together with my husband Jack Haywood who's in the front row here. Um, and anyway, let's get started. Uh, so we're talking about how to get medicine into our bodies in the, in the best way and in the um, proper form uh, depending on our need, our qualifying condition um, for medical marijuana. Um, the first thing we want to talk about um, that's a factor there is bioavailability. It's a big fat word, but really what it means is that um, it's what portion of the total cannabinoid content of what you're taking into your body is going to get into your bloodstream and thus affect um, the receptors um, that are responsible for altering our bodies according to um, the cannabinoid's med medical effects. Um, so by definition, if you administer IV cannabinoids, you're getting 100% um, bioavailability. That's the definition of bio bioavailability. Have you seen, um, I saw circulating on the web a video of somebody doing IV administration. I thought it was so funny how when she had the whole plant um, extract administered um, via I IV, she just... Uh, peals of laughter and looked as though she was just in seventh heaven, but um, the interesting part, it was really funny, but the interesting part was that 100% THC uh, directly to the IV put her in a quite different place. She was uh, scared and uh, exhibited many uh, symptoms of paranoia and... Um, Did it actually, turn her green? <laughs> no, no, I, I don't think so. You guys will have to look up that video, but... Um, so that would be 100% bioavailability um, <laughs> directly into the veins. But that's not going to happen when you ingest your medicine. Um, even when you smoke your medicine uh, or vaporize it, you're only getting about 10 to 25% of what's going into your lungs. And that depends on who you are as a person, how, how uh, effectively you smoke your medicine. Um, it depends on how you've prepared your medicine if you're eating it. Welcome, Rich. Here, give me pass one back. And uh, there are additional handouts out here. Uh, please help yourself. So, I keep forgetting it's up here. Um, so, bioavailability of any particular substance will depend on a variety of factors, including method of preparation, and we've got a variety of methods of preparation to show you here today. Um, and mode of ingestion and the metabolic and circulatory rates of the patient, et cetera, et cetera. So any questions on bioavailability? Okay. Um, just to drive the point home, um, this is sort of a mock-up of what's happening inside of your body um, as your medicine is absorbed. If you can imagine this system um, as being a body system and your medicine coming into your GI tract when you ingest your medicine. Um, some of it is going to continue to the exit, we all know where that leads. Um, and some absorption is going to happen via the uh, wall of your gastrointestinal uh, tract. Um, so that's uh, first round metabolism happening right there. And then um, the rest of your uh, medicine is going to be absorbed uh, via metabolism by the liver, and that converts your medicine into other forms, mainly sedative forms. Um, so if you can increase the bioavailability earlier in the system via the GI wall or even up in this area where you're, um, where you're ingesting it uh, sublingually perhaps, that can increase absorption because it 
rapidly enters the circulatory system. The quicker you can get it into the circulatory system, the higher the, the bioavailability of the way you're taking your medicine. So um, that's about all I wanted to highlight on this. So another thing to discuss that's really important to remember is psychoactivity of your medicine. And that's the point that a lot of people miss. They want it to be as uh, absorbed as possible, but then, you know, what if you can always overdo it? And that's a, a good point to make. Um, which portion of that total cannabinoid content is uh, converted into the acidic form of THC, the delta-9 um, or the non-acidic form of THC, the delta-9, that is the psychoactive, uh, psychoactive component of your medicine. So that total amount of delta-9 THC dissolved in a good carrier oil is the best measure of how, how psychoactive a medicine is going to be. If you're going to dissolve keef into butter directly, that's going to absorb into your body faster um, via the GI tract because it's in an oil. and um, you know, it, it also uh, decarboxylates it partially too by dissolving and heating in an oil. So that's going to increase your psychoactivity. And we've all had very potent uh, medicine before that's been really psychoactive. And it can be very scary for some people and uh, not really beneficial. <coughs> um, especially if you're taking large doses of cannabinoids. Cancer patients have to take large doses of cannabinoids if they're <coughs> using uh, this type of therapy. So um, it's important to consider psychoactivity of pure medicine. Excuse me. So um, these are just some pictures uh, I'll leave you with um, of uh, the different formulations of cannabinoids that you can have present in your medication. Um, the Delta 9 THC, um, where this R group, this group here is always going to be an H in uh, Delta 9, but depending on what is here at this location, it changes the medicine. So um, there are a variety of enzymes that do that within the plant as it matures, and we can alter these uh, types of medicine or the amount of each different cannabinoid present. Um, with certain factors like heating or degradation or curing, that type of thing. Um, we're not going to get too deep into how to change, um, interchange any uh, specific cannabinoids in your medicine. We're really dealing with whole plant extracts or infusions here like we had discussed in our previous class here at the Main Green Cross. Cooking oils and tinctures and, um, you know, extracts that people have been making for a long time. Yes, Roger. Well, you, you touched upon something there, and I always wondered why we took the tincture underneath the top. Mm -hmm. And so it's get into the circulatory system faster. That's so right. when, you're, when you're doing edibles, should you be, like, keeping it more in your mouth and chewing more? That's a really good question. Um, depending on how you take the edible, let's say it's a lollipop. Um, that's not just a buccal or um, ingesting method, it's actually sublingual and it's contacting the oral mucosa or the soft cushy membranes inside of your mouth. Um, and these membranes are perfused with a lot of capillaries, so the more your medicine contacts on the inside of your mouth, the more absorption is going to happen at that level. And then the next time your medicine is going to have the chance to be absorbed is in the first part of your um, gastrointestinal tract and the second part too. You know, there are various things that are absorbed out of your medicine as it goes through <coughs> your GI tract. And then um, your liver also contributes to metabolism. Your body's going to process it in a lot of ways once you absorb it. But the way to control the psychoactivity and that um, immediate bioavailability of your medicine is to have it um, come in contact with the mucous membranes and that's sublingual. Um, buccal sprays are uh, a new way that people are experimenting with um, administering medicine to and uh, there's a lot of information about that online. Um, if you have any more specific questions later we can talk about um, that too. But if you're interested, yeah, candy is a great way to uh, increase bioavailability right up front. So let's move on to the uh, handout here. I started with some useful conversions for you because if you want to sit down and do some math, the first thing you're going to need 
is uh, some useful conversion factors um, because you're always dealing with one volume and you need to get to another volume or maybe you have a weight of something but you need to get to volume or vice versa. It's always kind of hard. So um, one, mil one milliliter, if you didn't know, is about 20 drops. So one single drop of medicine, and that's different from a drop or fall, and I just want to highlight that really quickly. Um, so, oh, <laughs> I didn't think that was funny, but I guess it is. <laughs> it's been <it's> there, <laughs> So, you know, um, what I tell patients as far as the tincture that I provide, um, a therapeutic dose is one drop or full, and one drop or full is it fills the dropper about three quarters of the way full. I've tried to make it fill more. You really can't. And you can make it fill less, but why would you? Just take a full dropper full. And um, the amount of dropper fulls in my one ounce bottles tend to be 44. I try to uh, measure each time when I'm trying to work out doses. Um, <coughs> if I have a new batch that I think is more potent or has a different <coughs> therapeutic effect, um, you know, but one to two dropper fulls, generally is what you're aiming for, really in a tincture, something that you can take. Um, and glycerin tincture is one of the best ways to get your medicine absorbed right uh, up front, um, because you, the longer you hold it under your tongue, the quicker it will go right into your bloodstream, and um, you're not really looking to eat it, um, although if you ingest it, that's fine. It's more of a homeopathic dose that way because by the time it goes through your body, it's being processed and making it more sedative um, and, and you, it may not be as available to you. Um, so you want to increase the bioavailability bio bio by putting it under your tongue. Let's say that five times fast. But you're, you're, you're saying there that glycerin instead of alcohol, right? Alcohol does it even more, as a matter of fact, but a lot of people can't take alcohol. Um, that's a good point, too. Easier to hold it under your tongue if, you, if, you, if it's made from glycerin. Some people combine alcohol and glycerin in their preparations, and that's a great um, way to, you know, and you can experiment with that. You know, some of the most potent preparations for under the tongue are made from alcohol. You're absolutely right. So. Okay, I just wanted to know. Yeah. Um, we're not going to go through each one of these, but um, so if you are ever interested in calculating the total cannabinoid content of a dose of your medicine based on if you get something from back from Know Your Grow and you have a result and you really want to tell your um, patient or know for yourself, I have. 20 milligrams of total cannabinoids in, you know, one brownie. Um, I have worked that backwards for you here, so you can take a look at that and, um, you know, does anybody want to go through that specifically right now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm just afraid of getting too in too deep and, and if people, you know, you can always just tell me to move forward. So let's go with lab result one. Um, cooking oil results. Uh, one and a half milligrams per gram, and this is an actual result I looked up on Know Your Grow, and these all work out very nicely, as a matter of fact, if you take a look and do the math. Um, we're going to follow the A's all the way down for lab result one. So first thing, determine the lab result of your product. So lab result one is 1.5 milligrams per gram. Number two, we're going to determine the measure of product to be used in your medicinal recipe. So we're working with cooking oil. Here it is. You've gotten it from your caregiver. Um, do you want to pass this around? This is a good example of what cooking, infused cooking oil I think should look like, nice and amber, um, not green. What did you start with? What's the base? What the base is oil? organic um, olive and uh, safflower and canola oils that are non-GMO as well. Um, it's my own mix that I see I like and produces that nice color and seems to work. Um, so. You could use a fourth of a cup of oil in a recipe for one batch of cookies, let's say. It calls for a quarter cup of oil. So that's two liquid ounces. I know that from my useful conversions up here. Um, so convert the units you have, and we have milligrams per gram, into the total cannabinoid content, content for the recipe. And we want milligrams using a useful conversion. So we're going to say we, have, we start with two fluid ounces of oil. And then here comes our useful conversion. Um, up here, we, and it's a density conversion because we need to convert weight to volume here. 
So density is the best way to do that. And the density of oil is given to you up here in the useful conversions at 27.25 grams equals one fluid ounce. So if we have two fluid ounces of oil, then um, we're going to multiply that by 27.25 grams per fluid ounce. And that gives you, you have 54.5 grams of oil. So now you're going to um, continue to convert from grams of oil. You've got your 54.5 grams of oil, and now you're going to take your lab result and apply it there. Uh, you've got 1.5 milligrams of cannabinoids per gram of oil, so says Neuer Grow, and multiply that across to arrive at 81.75 milligrams of cannabinoids that you're entering into the recipe with that two ounces of oil. So you have to have your know, know your grow results or a similar lab results to start with and these conversion factors. Apply them at the right times and multiply across just as I did and you'll get to that. Then if you want to know what each serving gives you and let's say you have 12 brownies um, in this recipe for um, you know, a, a quart a cup of oil, you divide 81.75 milligrams of cannabinoids in the recipe by 12 brownies and you're going to get 6.8 milligrams per brownie. And uh, what they say is an adult therapeutic dose for ingested edibles, and I got this from a physician, is about 5 to 15 milligrams generally, and that depends on your own personal tolerance. Um, I would say, you know, uh, everybody's different, everybody's very different, and um, everybody's tolerance is very different. So um, that falls in that range, though, at the lower end of that range. And if you look at lab results, too, even, and I tried to choose something that Know Your Girl gave in a totally different um, unit. They gave, they gave it in milligrams per liquid ounce, and I'm like, oh, well, that's hard for people to tell. Like, how, how does mine compare with anybody else's? Um, do the math right down, uh, applying the same um, basic uh, formulas, and you come up with 13.3 milligrams per brownie. So that also falls within the range of 5 to 15 milligrams for an adult therapeutic dose of ingested. Um, so these are two great oils, and they both um, provide therapeutic dose, I would say. And that's a pretty minimal recipe as far as the oil is adding, too. I mean, I have recipes that call for a lot more oil than that. So, just, <laughs> um, all right. Now let's call, let's talk about capsules. Anybody have any questions about um, oil and, and calculating for that? Approximately how much product would it take to get 1.5 milligrams per gram? You know, um, I would say my oil probably falls in a therapeutic range, and I'm going to guess at the higher end, but every caregiver is going to say that, of <laughs> course. Um, I would suggest, um, and I don't, Way I know what weights are just by eye, um, but you have to just make sure that your oil is uh, just, like your product is just covered with oil, and you have very high quality product. If you're, you know, you have to, what you start with is what you end with. Um, so if you're starting with calyxes that, you know, and very high quality sugar trim, um, then you are going to end up with amber oil. But if you're starting with, um, you know, trim and using lower quality oils perhaps, um, then it might end up more green with less cannabinoid content. It's just, you know, whatever you can do. And there is a lot of information on how to make those effective oils. Um, we've done other classes on that and yep. we're offering them again in the future too. So, Okay, capsules. Capsules can be a little bit more tricky. But um, not really. Not they don't have to be. Um, we've laid it out pretty easily for you here. I recommend a number one capsule machine. These are really easy to figure out because each capsule is a half a milliliter in volume. And we've already, with all these useful conversions that we've given you here, it's pretty easy to figure out um, milliliters, um, you know, and work things down there. So the capsule machine itself, and you can order this from the capsulemachine.com. Um, these are the, uh, what comes in this box are the actual, uh, excuse me, empty, whoop, there comes one. We can pass a couple around. So here we go. And there's different kinds of those. There's different kinds, um, but you want to use uh, the non, 
not the veg the vegan or the vegetarian right. ones that melt. Right. You want yeah. the regular ones because right. you're going to use oil gelatin, and uh, gelatin. gelatin. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, made from gelatin. They come with a um, keeping dry pack, and I've never had a problem with them sticking together. I keep it in the same place that I keep um, my herbs and medicine. So nice, cool, dark, and dry. I learned the hard way. The vegetable ones will melt. They will melt, yeah, yeah. and that, that's a horrible thing to learn yes. the hard way because you've worked so hard on the preparation to go in there and everything that you've lined up for yourself. And when I went to the store, I couldn't remember which one it was that not buy. Which one is it? Choice. That's always, <laughs> you know, when you have two choices and you always invariably choose the wrong one. Um, oh, the top is on here because I just made some capsules and I'm going to show you some examples. Um, here, but uh, so you fill each of these top and bottom, and um, this is your top. You set it aside, and each one of these has half of a capsule inside of it, and you set that up neatly for yourself on a sterile surface after washing your hands, um, and uh, you have your preparation that you've made. Um, and it's very easy to use this. There are instructions online as well, and if anybody wants a tutorial of how to make them, that would probably take up another, um, another class. There's so much to learn in this field. It's, uh, it amazes me every day. So there's two, four, six, eight of these. Um, these are uh, oil capsules, um, and these are um, oil. This is a resin that I made with... Um, sugar leaves and that's non decarboxylated so it's not act it's non psychoactive they're for a sedative and anti anxiety effect um, and then these are straight up keef capsules um, and these you can take a lot of these these are also non decarboxylated so you can take a lot of medicine in these keef capsules and you get an insane body buzz <laughs> but um, your head isn't too high you might get the sweats I I've, that's been a uh, but, but not too much on the paranoia and uh, trippy anxiety. So it's just Keith? It's just Keith in there. And you can either decarboxylate or non-decarboxylate, and that's the topic for another class as well. But decarboxylating will increase the psychoactivity of your medicine always by, um, you know, removing the acid group from uh, the THC to make it the delta-9, which is the psychoactive. So size one capsules each have a half a milliliter in volume and there are 24 slots in this machine at a half a milliliter each. So there are 12 milliliters of total volume um, in 24 capsules or one batch. And I make small batches one batch at a time, um, nice and small so I know and I'm not um, trying to increase uh, and multiply out my dosages. Even though I'm really good at math, I'm not going to... Uh, the stuff I'm working with here is expensive, it's hard to come by, and I want to make sure that I make small batches and make them carefully. So, um, Recipe one. One gram of keef dissolved into a coconut oil and lecithin combination, and I recommend using organic coconut oil, and you can use liquid le lecithin, or if you're heating, decarboxylating, you can use the powdered kind and it will melt into there. You just have to stir it, it takes a little bit of time. This is easier. Um, and dissolved to make up a volume of 12 milliliters. And the way to do that is you put your keef into your little container, perhaps it's a ceramic container, a little glass <coughs> container that you're going to set in your oven, which is what I do. I put my oven on warm if I'm making capsules, and that's just a way to keep things warm and going. Yep, butter's warm. <laughs> Not burning over there. That's cool. Thank you. Um, <coughs> So uh, you make up that volume of 12 milliliters, and you can get little um, containers that are graduated in that. And so we would divide that. We're going to use that to fill 24 capsules. So if you work that down, one gram of keef is going to have approximately half of that is going to be cannabinoids. Right across the board, if it's good keef um, that's sifted with the general screens for that purpose, you know, for that purpose specifically, it's going to be about 50%. If it's really green keef, then it's going to be less than that. Know that. Um, it works out to, so anyway, dividing your one gram by 24 capsules works out to be 0.01416 grams of keef per cap. But that's 41.6 milligrams. Let's make it nice and easy at this point and convert our units. 
So 41.6 milligrams of keef per capsule. But if keef is approximately 50% cannabinoid content, then each capsule is going to be half of that, or 20 milligrams of cannabinoids. So dissolving one gram of keef into your 12 milliliter volume gives you a capsule that's about 20 milligrams of cannabinoids. An adult therapeutic dose, again, is 5 to 15. This is a very high dose. Um, but depending on, and, and also if you put lecithin in it, it's going to, thank you very much, increase the bioavailability. If you just use coconut oil, it will lessen the bioavailability um, or the initial bioavailability, so the psychotropic effect will be less. These are th factors that you need to balance when you're formulating your medicine. Do I want it to be absorbed right away? Yes. Okay, add some lecithin to the mix. Um, you know, how much keef or how much oil do I want to put in this? Let's work out the math and make sure it falls in that range, if at all possible, if you have good results on it. Um, so that was recipe one. Um, and let's work it right down to the drops. Uh, 20 drops is about one milliliter. So 10 drops of each of mixture in each capsule using your syringe. So what I do is I take one of these injection, injection syringes for meats and I unscrew this thing, I don't need it, they don't even, you don't even have to screw it on to begin with, but this here, this just gets in your way. Um, this has a little tip that you can dip into your uh, ceramic pot or your glass pot and draw it up, and I use the same one every time. Um, here's, there's still some in the bottom, it's never going to come out. Um, oh, wait, maybe it will. <laughs> don't waste it. Maybe it will. Yeah, come here. <laughs> My first patient right there. So um, anyway, uh, this is what you're going to use to fill your capsules. And you've got to have a steady hand, a good eye. Don't have two cups of coffee that morning. Put on some Jerry and relax. And just, um, you know, use both hands and take small amounts up at a time and practice. Use this to steady yourself. And... Um, and get down at this level, it's really important, and drop by drop add it. And what I found is that oil itself um, is a little big, it, ma it makes a bigger droplet than water, so there are about 18 drops in a milliliter. So each one of these is going to have nine drops. So if you have a size one machine and you're using this and you're making oil this way, it's going to have nine drops, and you're just going to count to nine and, and move along. And very easy. Um, and then you put it together and pop them out, and you have 24 capsules made very, very nicely um, for you or your patients. That's recipe one. Um, recipe two goes into using uh, resin extract instead of keef, which I also have here. Yep. And we can pass this around. Uh, let's not open it up today. It's. Um, this is an extract I make, um, and you can make extracts in a variety of ways, but that's a whole other class. Um, this is a very concentrated RSO. Um, so one gram of cannabis oil or resin extract dissolved into about one and a half teaspoons of your oil and lecithin mixture. Um, it yields a mixture with a volume of approximately 12 milliliters, and that's enough, again, to fill 24 of your capsules. Cannabis oil resin can be more potent than keef. I want to say that, but it depends on how you make it. Um, if you're using BHO that's been winterized and filled, like it made very, very well by an extract artist to melt into an oil for your, you know, these can be up to 75 to 97 percent cannabinoids. So your, your, what your Take in mind what you're working with. I use the 50% right across the board if it's an extract or a keef. You assume about 50% is going to be cannabinoid content if it's made properly. I don't have lab results on that, those, that yet, but it's coming. I can tell from the color of it and the consistency how potent it is. Um, if it's green and sludgy, it's going to be less potent. If it's perfectly oily but thick and amber, it's going to be very <coughs> Um, if it's clear, you're getting uh, certain, uh, certain cannabinoids out of there, and all of the, ter I mean, if it's clear yellow, it's very, very potent sometimes. So just be aware of what you're doing. Um, and I'm not going to discuss extracts today.
<laughs> um, so a more potent oil pr preparation could be calculated as follows. One gram or 1,000 milligrams of oil at 75% cannabinoid content, say, is 750 milligrams of cannabinoids that you're adding into your mixture for this recipe. And so divide 750 milligrams uh, by 24 capsules, and you're coming up with 31.25 milligrams of cannabinoids per capsule. So starting with one gram of oil is going to uh, lead to a much more potent capsule than starting with one gram of keef sometimes. I've also included um, on the next page, uh, do I have all pages? Uh, these were out of order. Uh, uh, so so before capsules. Yeah. Uh, okay. Mine didn't have everything. Oh. Uh. <laughs> so useful. Oh, okay, okay. Um, these are the actual recipes, I guess. And we can work into the recipes over there. So it's fine. I skipped it anyway. Um, and this last page is cannabis oil dosing for children and beginners. And a lot of people have questions about, um, you know, People make RSO for cancer patients. Um, they make concentrated oils and um, CBD oils, other things to use for patients. They're administering high levels of cannabinoids via resins and oils. Um, this is a guide for them to start with. And this is a very complex um, subject. And if you have any questions, um, please feel free to you know, let me know. Uh, is this something you guys want to get into specifically, or do we want to move into the cooking? Um, what do you think? Is this a topic people have an interest in, the cannabis oil? The, you know, this is resin extracts and, and putting it into capsules. So, okay, well, let's, let's do it. Nobody's saying no. <laughs> To start, one gram of cannabis oil should be mixed into 20 grams of organic cold-pressed virgin coconut oil. This is a great, you know, so they're mixing one gram into 20 grams of uh, coconut oil. That may be different from our recipe there. Mixing can be done in a very efficient and easy manner. So you want to warm your coconut oil on low heat. Again, use your oven in your kitchen. Um, keep it on a low heat. Uh, you don't have to put it on high heat. And when you're uh, dosing for children and beginners, we're not decarboxylating and, and subjecting our oil to heat for long periods of time. We don't want to incre increase the psychotropic effect. We want to keep that to a minimum so that we can increase the total cannabinoids we're getting into somebody's system. So um, when the oil is in a liquid state, state you can draw it up into uh, syringes and they're ready to use. Uh, and so from there, you're going to, um, they, have, they have different instructions than what I've given you here. Again, you're going to uh, go through and dilute this so that um, it gives you a ratio of 1 20th a gram or 0 0.05 grams or 50 milligrams of cannabis oil per gram of mixed coconut oil. And that's going to give you one size zero zero capsules. So those capsules and that capsule machine would be larger than the one I've given you instructions for here and shown you here. Um, so that, uh, the chances of an overdose are minimized when you do the math like this. And uh, even though um, sometimes people can make mistakes and overdoses can happen, what I wanna highlight here is that overdoses aren't harmful or toxic any, in any way. People just t generally need to take their time, take some milk, take a nap, um, and let it work their way out of their system. Breathe. Don't forget to breathe. You know. Sometimes hugs are good. Sometimes they're not. Pink Floyd is a good. Oh, I like that suggestion too. So that double zero uh, capsule holds approximately that one full gram of oil, and they're going to take that dose twice daily: once in the morning, once in the evening. And that gives approximately a tenth of a gram of cannabis oil daily. Now, when you're uh, working toward a full cancer curing recommended dose, and, and they're talking about very large doses, sometimes up to 60 grams in a 90-day period, this is not a lot, so that's going to be a lot of capsules at that rate. But you're going to want to increase the amount of um, oil that you're putting in with the coconut oil over time, making these capsules. And that will increase the dosage that you're giving to your patient so that they can achieve that 60-gram mark in the 90 days. 
um, that's the important piece. Um, so the second week or when ready, you d reduce the dilution. Um, and by following these steps, you just add more oil or resin and less coconut oil as you go. And this dosing schedule doesn't have to apply strictly to pediatric patients, but it could also be used to begin cannabinoid therapy on novice adults, elderly, infirm patients. Coconut oil is not the only medium that can be used. Olive oil, grapeseed oil, hemp oil, and others have been successfully used to infuse and dilute cannabis oil for dosing. Um, and some of these oils can be applied uh, to the mouth as well, sublingually, buccally. They can be administered in sprays. Um, so anything that you can make into an oil or a tincture, a glycerin tincture, um, can be administered um, orally or buccally. It can be ingested. And then it can be infused into your cooking in a variety of ways. We've all experimented at this point with butters, oils, uh, tinctures. So let's take a look at how to use them in the kitchen. Um, we're going to make some pasta today, I believe. Is that right? We're going to make ravioli. Ravioli. <laughs> awesome. Do you want to take a little break first? Sure. Let's, let's get the station set up. All right. Let's we'll start. Yeah. 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 Yeah.